Hi everyone, welcome back. So today we'd like to uh, tackle a problem in Fourier series. And uh, specifically, we're just going to compute the Fourier series for uh, a simple function. So the function we're interested in is f of t, uh, which we're told is periodic with period 2 pi. f of t is 1 from minus pi to 0. And then it's minus 1 from 0 to pi. So first off, we're interested in sketching f of t. Secondly, uh, we'd like to compute the Fourier series uh, for f of t. And then thirdly, uh, we'd like to sketch the first non-zero term of the Fourier series. And uh, we can specifically uh, sketch this t uh, single term on top of f of t. So I'll let you think about this problem for now, and I'll be back in a moment. Hi, everyone. Welcome back. OK, so let's take a look at sketching f of t. OK, so for part a, we have our axes, t. And we're told f of t uh, within some interval. So we might as well plot f of t on that interval. OK, so minus pi pi and 0, we know that f of t is 1 from minus pi to 0. We're also told that it's minus 1 from 0 to pi. And now, uh, to fill in the blanks, or to uh, complete the picture of f, we're told that it has a period of 2 pi. So note that they've told us what f looks like over the range uh, of minus pi to pi, which is a length of 2 pi. So basically what we can do is we can use this as a, a stamp and just pick up this entire picture, shift it over one period 2 pi, and just think of thinking of this uh, picture and stamping it in multiple places. So just filling this in, it's going to look like a square wave. which jumps between minus 1 and 1 at every multiple of pi. OK, so this concludes part A. Uh, for part B, which is the real meat of the, meat of the problem, uh, we're interested in computing the Fourier series for f of t. Now, we can always write down a Fourier series for any periodic function. And specifically, in this case, so for part B, the periodic function we're interested in has period 2 pi. So in the notes, for the class notes, we've identified L with half the period. So in this case, L is 2 pi divided by 2, which gives us pi. And just to recall what a Fourier series is, what we do is we try and take our function f of t and write it down as a summation of sines and cosines. So in this case, for a function f of t, which is 2 pi periodic, it's going to look something like this. It's going to be a of 0 plus sum from n equals 1. And there's going to be infinitely many terms. But in this case, we have a of n times cosine of nt. And it's nt here because we have period 2 pi plus bn sine nt. Okay, so this is the general form. And when asked to compute the Fourier series of a, fun of a function, the main difficulty is to compute these coefficients a n and b n. However, that essentially boils down to working out some integrals. OK, so let's take a look at what a of 0 is. So a 0, the formula for a 0, is 1 over 2L, so in this case it's 1 over 2 pi, times the integral over one period of the function from minus pi to pi of just f of t. So notice how a0 is just the average of the function. So if we take a look at the function f of t, 
f of t spends exactly half of its time at 1 and half of its time at minus 1. So immediately we, we could guess that the average value of f of t is going to be 0. If you, if you wanted to work it out specifically, we would have 1 over 2 pi minus pi to 0, f of t takes on the value of plus 1. And then from 0 to pi, f of t takes on the value of minus 1. So we would end up getting pi minus pi, which is 0. Okay. For an, the formula is 1 over half the period. So note how a of 0 is just a special case. We always have the full period in a of 0, but in an and bn, uh, the factor that divides the integral is always going to be half the period times minus pi to pi, f of t cosine nt dt. And I, I should point out that, in general, we only need to integrate over one period of the function. So in some sense, there's nothing special about minus pi and pi. It's just uh, very often, these are the easiest in, uh, bounds of integration to, uh, to integrate over. But in practice, we could have used 0 to 2 pi or any other uh, interval, as long as it's exactly one period of the function. OK. So uh, in this case, uh, I'd just like to take a look at the symmetry of f of t. And we note that the, the function f of t is actually uh, odd about the origin. So if f of t is odd and cosine t is an even function, then an odd times an even function is going to be an odd function. And when you integrate an odd function from minus any value to the same positive value, so in this case minus pi to pi, we always get 0. So this is actually 0 because we're integrating an odd function over a symmetric interval. So lastly, we have the values of uh, bn, which are 1 over pi minus pi to pi f of t of sine nt uh, dt. And if we were to look at just the symmetry argument again, f of t is an odd function, sine t is an odd function, and odd times an odd function is an even function. When you integrate an even function, over a symmetric bound, uh, you will essentially get twice the value of the integral from 0 to one of the bounds. So b of n in this case doesn't vanish, which means we actually have to do some work. OK, so what, what do we do? Well, we know the value of f of t on two intervals, so we're just going to have to work out each interval. Minus pi to 0, it takes on the value of 1, so we have sine nt. And then from 0 to pi, f of t takes on the value of minus 1 sine nt dt's. And you'll note that these, these integrals are actually the same. So this is negative 2 over pi, 0 to pi sine nt dt which if we integrate is negative 1 over n cosine nt evaluated between 0 and pi. So if I work this out, we get a minus and a minus. Well, get minus 1 over n cosine n pi plus 1 over n. So note that cosine of 0 is just 1. OK. And now if we take a look at cosine n pi, we see that cosine n pi oscillates between minus 1 and 1. 
So cosine of pi is negative 1. Cosine of 2 pi is 1. Cosine of 3 pi is minus 1, dot, dot, dot. So this term right here is actually negative 1 to the n. OK, so we have 2 over n pi, 1 minus negative 1 to the n. And now if we just plug in some values of b of 0, b, or sorry, b of 1, b of uh, 2, b of 3, b of 4, we can see what pattern uh, emerges in the b's. OK, so b of 1, if I plug in 1, I get 1 minus negative 1 is going to be 2. So I get minus 4 over pi. Uh, b of 2 is going to be 1 minus minus 1 squared is just 1, so this vanishes. b of 3 is going to be 1 minus minus 1 cubed, this is just negative 1. So again, we get negative uh, 4 over 3 pi. b of 4 is going to be 0, dot, dot, dot. OK? So uh, it's sometimes useful to write out what the Fourier series looks like. So I'll just write it out right here. So we have f of t is going to be negative 4 over pi times sine of t plus 1 third sine of 3t plus 1 fifth sine of 5t plus dot, dot, dot. Okay. So this concludes uh, part C. Oh, sorry, part B. And now lastly, for part C, we're asked to, comp uh, to sketch what does the, uh, the first Fourier term look like. Okay, so in this case, the first Fourier term is going to be negative 4 over pi times sine t. OK, so I'm going to go back to our diagram from part A. Okay, so let's go back to our diagram from part A. Now, what does minus 4 over pi sine t look like? Well, it's a sine wave that has exactly uh, period 2 pi. And it's going to line up exactly with this square wave. Uh, in addition, minus 4 over pi is just slightly larger than 1. So we're going to end up with a sine which peaks uh, just slightly above 1 and slightly below 1. It's going to go through 0, and it's going to go through each, each value uh, or each multiple of pi. So it might look something like this. So this is the first Fourier term in the series. And notice how this first Fourier term uh, is actually a pretty good approximation to the square wave, considering it's just one term in a series. As we add more terms in the series, we're going to, look at, we're going to get something which looks closer and closer to a square wave function. OK. So I'd just like to quickly recap. When computing a per uh, the Fourier series for a periodic function, uh, the first useful thing to do is just write down the formula for a Fourier series. And then write down the formulas for the coefficients of the Fourier series. So write down the formulas for a0, an, bn. When computing a0, you can often just look at the average of the function. When computing an and bn, it's also useful to look at the symmetry of your function. And if it's either even or odd sym uh, symmetric, then typically either all the ans or all the bns will vanish. And then when you work out the integrals, you can then reconstruct the Fourier series. So I'd like to conclude here, and I'll see you next time.